Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the season finale of Snowpiercer Season 1, 994 cars long. Now this was a very crazy episode with a lot of questions left unanswered, so as far as touching on what might happen in Season 2, I will make a separate video, likely including the promo, for the next season as we already have it. In case you're curious, we already have footage from Season 2 as it was pre-planned and had just finished shooting as the world descended into chaos. So it's already in editing now, it's just the question of when that will be done. Anyway, let's jump into this episode. It's a pretty surreal opening with no narration, rather almost a shot for shot of the opening of the first episode of the season, with the overhead shot of Melanie sitting down and making her speech. I really liked this because it sort of conveyed that regardless of everything that happened, we're still in the same place. It's just that Melanie isn't in power anymore, which can be seen with Leighton taking over the microphone. We also get our line Snowpiercer 994 cars long, which is great to hear and a great payoff for the season finale. We also get a scene between Miles and Leighton, with Miles finding out about Josie, but Leighton purposely leaving out the circumstance, which I think will definitely be a plot point next season, as you know Miles won't be a big fan of Zara after he finds out. We also get quite a funny scene between Pike, LJ, and Terence. Well, at least it was funny for Pike and Terence, I actually felt a little bad for LJ. It almost feels quite against character for LJ to react the way she does to her parents' death, but I suppose I just read that all wrong. I just couldn't imagine LJ having that sort of response. I also actually enjoyed the scene between Oz and LJ, with them kind of being the downtrodden of the train. It's actually quite a telling scene, and aside from the ending, one of my favourite of this episode. We get a scene of Melanie going down to the night car to have a vision with Audrey about her daughter Alexandra, with her clearly regretting leaving her behind. Also with the hug and the music playing, which is She's Got You by Patsy Cline. It seems kind of foreshadowing that Alexandra will almost have a hold on Melanie next season, but this is episode especially has taught me not to think too much about foreshadowing, with characters just reacting the opposite of how I would expect them to, but some interesting foreshadowing paid off later in the episode. A large chunk of the episode is just people figuring out where they stand with each other, with Till and Jinju ending their relationship, Ruth and Melanie get their scene, with Melanie saying De democracy used to work. Yeah, Melanie, it did in a society where everything was plentiful. As much as I want to just agree with her, I really can't. Melanie makes it sound really good in practice, but even she clearly has her doubts, and this scene kind of proves those doubts, with people turning to Wilfred the second they can. This brings us to the climax, the music on the radio. Leighton makes the call to try and make contact, learning that the music is coming from another train, a supply train known as Big Alice, with Melanie and Bennett assuming it's Wilfred. Now, for people who have read the graphic novel, whether this is Icebreaker or not, and it's just been renamed, will be quite interesting. It even seems foreshadowed with Melanie telling Bennett who knows what diseases are on board, of foreshadowing what happens in the graphic novel with disease becoming rampant and having to jump train. I really like the symbolism of when Big Alice connects to Snowpiercer, as in the film a phone or a line to the front was in a Wilfred symbol at the back of the train. Well, in this train it's a line to another train, which I thought was quite cool symbolism, might just be me. Anyway, Leighton leads a group down train to defend the tail, Ruth also comes down in her fur and with a gun and has her little ta tantrum about regulation. And this brings me to possibly my most hated premise this episode, Bennett purposely running into Big Alice and cutting the satellite link, trying to convince Melanie to stand down because of all the supplies on Big Alice. Now, I don't like this for a variety of reasons. A, it doesn't suit his character at all. B, I think it was a badly executed attempt to subvert expectations. I think it could have been so much better for Harvey to make that argument, it just suits his character. It doesn't suit Bennett's. But I don't know, I suppose, in my opinion, it just doesn't work. Melanie goes outside to cut the connection between the two trains, with Harvey pulling the brakes and Melanie going flying, bringing Snowpiercer to a complete stop for the first time in years right back where the train's journey first began. Also, the scene where the W turns around to an M was quite 
definitely foreshadowed all the way back in episode 2, with Ruth correcting Melanie's upside down badge, which is actually really cool, I'll give them that. Then Melanie's daughter comes aboard asking where her mother is, with her mother being outside ready to cut the connection, turning to comic style like back in the first few minutes of the first episode, also seeing someone at the back of the train, possibly the lad himself, Wilfred. Now, shy of certain things, this episode really opened up the possibilities of the show, introducing Big Ellis and with the return of Wilfred. I will cover the promo for season 2 over the next couple of days, I don't want to get into that now as this video is already quite long for a Snowpiercer review, and the season 2 prediction and promo breakdown might be even longer. So thank you for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for more, and I hope to see you in the future, bye!